Good, everyone. Let's stand together. Good to be in the house of the Lord today. The wonderful presence of the Lord has been already here in our service. We're going to sing and just worship the Lord here for just a few moments. And uh, well, we'll talk a little bit more. Let's sing right now. Let's worship the Lord. It's going to be worth it all when we see Jesus. Life's trials will seem so small when we see Christ. What a beautiful day that will be when we go to be with the Lord. Let's sing Magnify Him. because pastor's going to lead in worship. And we're going to do things a little bit differently, uh, old style, I guess. You know, it's, it's, it's hard to say that, Sister Ackerson, you know. It's hard to say old style when it used to be the new style, right? I mean, it's like, man. <laughs> I look for the day when I became the old way of doing things. Uh, today we're going to be singing about heaven for just a little bit. 
and we begin to think about some of the songs that come along with heaven. Songs like, I'll fly away. Some glad morning when this life is o'er, I'm going to fly away. Or won't that be a hallelujah meeting when we step on the other side? Won't that be a hallelujah meeting when we step on the other side? No, I'm not going to do that to you. How about I'm getting ready to leave this world. I'm getting ready for those gates of pearl. Or it's going to be worth it all when we see Jesus. Or how about the other one that says, I wish we'd all been ready. Heaven sounding sweeter all the time. I have a mansion just over the hilltop. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. I ain't going to do that one to you either. How about when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Or in the sweet by and by. Or won't it be wonderful there? No burdens to bear. Or the more contemporary, oh, when the saints go marching in. <laughs> Just over in the glory land. Or one that you younger folks might recognize, I can only imagine. What's it talking about? I'm going to tell you what it's talking about before we start singing. Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches. Upon the first day of the week, that's I'm going to read a little further. Come on now. Come on. Pushed the wrong button, didn't I? I got it. I just got to find a spot I want. Come on now. Come on. I'm going to take a praise break here if I have to. I'm going to find that. Mm. It was only one verse. Come on now. There it is. Just had to push the button again. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. At the first trump, for the trump shall sound, the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God which giveth to us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. We shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, and we're going to go to be with the Lord. I think we ought to give God a, a great hand clap of praise. Let's thank you for our destination as to where we're headed. To, amen. Here today. Oh, I want to see him and look upon his face. As I journey through the land, singing as I go.
Oh. 
Let's give God some praise right now. Clap your hands. Thank him for that place that he's prepared for you. Hallelujah. 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 One songwriter said, I'm getting ready to leave this world. This world will never hold me. Hallelujah. What a day, what a day, what a day. Thank you, Jesus. Coming up very soon, we'll be going home with Jesus in the twinkling of an eye. I've made my reservation for that mansion in the sky. I may not know the moment. I may not know the day. But I know that I'll be leaving when he calls his church away. Is that something you're looking forward to? Is that something that you're believing God's going to do for you? Amen. Let's sing and let's worship the Lord. Going home with Jesus in the twinkling of an eye. I've made my reservation for the mansion in the sky. I may not know the moment. I may not know the day.
Amen, 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 amen. We're looking for a place today where that there'll be no more sorrow, no more sickness, no more pain. We're looking for a place where that we'll get together and never have to part. We're looking for a place that's been prepared for us so that where Jesus is, we can be also. What a day. What a day that is going to be. I don't think there's going to be any more Mondays. I don't think there's any more work schedules. <laughs> Broken pipes. <laughs> Downtime with water heaters and furnaces and higher electric bills. We don't even have that because the Lamb will be the light. What a place that is and what a place that's going to be for us to be able to be with the Lord and never, ever part. No more pain. Wonder how many people right now standing where you're at are suffering with pain. You know, there's one thing about heaven, not to preach at you, but we used to do this too. <laughs> We'd get on a little trail and start going and sing another song. But I think we can bring a little bit of heaven right down here today. And there's healing in the name of Jesus. There's healing in the name of Jesus. And this is how it kind of went. All of a sudden, the power of the Holy Ghost would come in just like this. And people's hearts would be, begin to melt before the presence of the Lord. They'd begin to think about heaven, the goodness of the Lord, the power of God, and they'd lift up their hands. And healing would come down over them. I wonder if that same thing might just happen here today. We're going to begin to sing this old song. Lift up your hands and begin to worship the Lord. Get into His presence because you just never know what could happen to you today as you enter into His presence.
right now. <laughs> Woo! Oh, we're thankful today, oh God. Amen, 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 amen. I sense an expectancy in your spirit here this morning. I feel an anticipation in my spirit today as we've begun to sing about heaven and talk about heaven and vision heaven. I don't know about you, but it's all right with me if the trumpet would sound right now and the dead in Christ would rise first and then we which are alive and remain would be caught up together to meet him in the air. We don't know the moment. We don't know the day. But I can tell you one thing. When the angel puts that trumpet to his lips, you better make sure that you have settled the account. You better make sure that your name's written in the Lamb's book of life. You better be ready to go. Amen, amen. John chapter 14, beginning at verse number 1. I'm a little excited here today. Because I'm going to preach to you about heaven. And I'm going to preach until you get an anticipation in your spirit, in your soul that matches the anticipation that I have in mind today. So the length of my message is determined by how great your anticipation is going to be today for a place called heaven. Woo! I feel the Holy Ghost in this place today. John chapter 14, beginning at verse number 1, Jesus is speaking and he said, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. Turn back just a couple of books to the book of Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28 and verse number 19. I'm going to read this out of the English Standard Version today. This is what it says. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. I want to preach to you for the next few moments on this thought. Make Heaven crowded. Make heaven crowded. Would you put your Bibles down, lift your hands, lift your voice, and let's ask God to speak to us through his word. God, we thank you today. God, you're so worthy of all the praise and all the glory, all the honor. And God, we worship you in spirit and in truth here this morning. And God, we're ready. We've cultivated an atmosphere where your word can go forth. God, would you let it spring forth and give life to our situations today? God, would you increase our faith and give us a hope today? God, that this world is not my home. We're just passing through. And that we'll make heaven our home, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. As you're seated today, look at your neighbor and tell him, say, make heaven crowded. Oh, come on, you can do better than that. Tell them, say, make heaven crowded. In the book of Revelation, the writer John gives a depiction of heaven. John, the revelator, while exiled on the Isle of Patmos, he gets carried away in the spirit, and he records a revelation of the new Jerusalem. And he begins to describe this city in Revelation chapter 21 in verse number 10. He says, And he carried me away in the spirit to a great high mountain. And he showed me the holy city Jerusalem coming down 
out of heaven from God. Having the glory of God. It's radiance like a most rare jewel. Like a jasper clear as crystal. It had a great high wall with 12 gates. And the gates had 12 angels. And on the gates the names of the 12 tribes of the sons of Israel were inscribed. On the east there were three gates. On the north three gates. On the south three gates. And on the west there were three gates. And the wall of the city had 12 foundations. And on them were the 12 names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. And the one who spoke with me had a measuring rod of gold to measure the city and its gates and the walls. And the city lies four square in its length, the same as its width. And he measured the city with his rod, 12,000 stadii. This is where we get our word stadium. Its length and its width and its height are all equal. Let me pause for just a moment. There have been a lot of stadiums that have been built in our world today. And they have all of the modern conveniences that you could ought ever possibly come up with. But none compare to the one that John is describing in Revelation chapter 21. Sorry, SoFi Stadium. You don't have any dibs on what heaven's going to be like. Sorry, Jerry's world. You don't have any meaning as to what heaven is going to be like. You've tried to create your stadiums in all of its grand splendor. But nothing quite compares to what John is describing here today. He goes on in verse number 17. He also measures its walls. 144 cubits by human measurement which is also an angel's measurement. The wall was built of jasper, while the city was pure gold, like unto clear glass. The foundations of the wall of the city were adorned with every kind of jewel. The first was jasper, the second sapphire, the third agate, the fourth emerald, the fifth onyx, the sixth carnelian, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth chrysoprase, the eleventh jacinth, and the twelfth amethyst. I think I should get a hand clap of appreciation just for getting all of those correct. The twelve gates were twelve pearls, and each of the gates made of a single pearl. Try wearing that around your neck. And the street of the city was pure gold like transparent glass. The gold is so good you can see through it. And I saw no temple in the city for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. The city has no need for the sun or the moon for the glory of the Lord gives it the light. And its lamp is the Lamb. Its light with the nations walk. And the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. And its gates will never be shut by day. Watch this now. And there shall be no night there. They'll bring the glory. And they'll bring the honor of the nations. Watch verse 27. But nothing unclean will ever Enter into it, nor anyone who has done that which is detestable or false, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. It's important, young people and adults that are here today, that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. I'm not talking about you just grab a pencil 
and maybe scribble your name on there because you might be able to block out those dates or you might be able to pencil in your name. No, 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 no. You better make sure that your name is written in blood. Your eternity depends on whether your name has been written in the Lamb's book of life. So you better make sure here today before you leave that your name is written in that sacred scroll. The only people that will be able to walk around in that city are the ones whose names have been written in the Lamb's book of life. The only people that will be able to experience the splendor of heaven are the ones that can say the old account was settled long ago. F.M. Graham penned these words. There was a time on earth when in the books of heaven the old account was standing for sins yet unforgiven. My name was at the top and there were many things below but I went and found the keeper and I settled it long ago you see the old account was large it was growing every day for I was always sinning and never tried to pray but when I looked ahead and saw such pain and woe I thought I better get this settled. And I settled it long ago. I'm going to tie in with what pastor was teaching during the Sunday school portion today. And if you haven't settled your account as of yet, listen to verse number three. Sinner, oh wretched man that you are, seek the Lord and repent of all your sins. I've come to declare to Calvary today there's only one way that you can settle the account and it starts when you get on your knees and you repent of all your sins. Somebody ought to say amen. Amen. For thus he commanded if we're going to make it in. And then if you should live a hundred, a thousand A million years below, it doesn't matter because you've already settled it and you settled it long ago. I wonder, are there any adults in this house today and you could tell these young people, it's worth settling your account now. No overdraft fees, no bounce checks. It's time to settle your account today. And for some of those young people, that's probably the first time they've ever heard that song. But let me break it down for you in today's genre. There is a new name written down in glory. And it's mine. Yes, it's mine. Hey, because I met the author of my story. And he's mine. Yes, he's mine. That's the way we sing it today. But the meaning of the song is this. We were a sinner, but because we repented, we're baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of our sins. And we came up and resurrected into a newness of life and received the Holy Ghost. The account was settled and our names are written. In the Lamb's book of life, there's an expectation in my spirit today. There's an anticipation in my soul because this world is not my home. I'm just passing through. Look at your neighbor and tell him, say, I'm not staying here for very long. I wish somebody, the next time you're having a bad day, That you just square your shoulders, throw your head back, and just declare it to your adversary. This world is not my home. 
I'm looking for a city whose builder and maker is God. And so you may be able to mess with my finances down here. And you may be able to mess with my family while I'm down here. But this world is not my home. I'm just passing through. I wish one of you young people would stand up and kind of give me the preacher's nod like you feel the spirit here today. Come on. I'm going to be preaching for a while if your anticipation levels don't increase here today. But I've got an expectancy in my spirit and in my soul that the trumpet could sound at any time. And I'm ready to go. Come on, you need to look at the adversary and tell him it's going to be worth it all. One beautiful, happy day. Because the captain of the vessel, he is calling, get on board today. You've been wasting enough time. It's time to get on the old gospel ship. Because this train is bound for glory. And if you're going to make it, you've got to live holy. Woo. Maybe we should have broke that one out today. I know you texted it to me and you kind of said, well, I'm just kind of joking on those one. This train only has one station. Acts 2.38 salvation. This train only has one God, one faith, one word that we can believe in here today. And so it's time to get on board. The whole purpose is that we can make heaven crowded you ever go to those places where it's just wall to wall people black friday shopping at jc penny <laughs> wall to wall people i think there's probably a stadium that's going to be wall to wall people tonight you can't move. It's wall to wall people. So you gotta, excuse me, excuse me here, excuse me. I gotta, I, my, my seat's just, it's right over, I, just over here. It's, it's wall to wall people. And I've got to get to my seat. I've got to make it to where my destination is. Because I don't want to miss the event that's about to take place. Can I tell Calvary something here today? There is to be an anticipation in your spirit and in your soul for that place called heaven. Well, Brother James, you know... I'm just not a people person. Yeah. Well, heaven's going to be full of people. And the alternative, hell, it's going to be full of people. Yeah. So whether you're a people person or not, you're going to be surrounded with people. I'd rather hear people rejoicing and celebrating that they met their Savior than to hear weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. And so my goal today is to create within us a desire that we are going to make heaven crowded. And I came up with two solutions to how we can make heaven crowded. There may be more, but I only came up with two. You may want to get your pens out and write this little tidbit of information down. Write it on your phone. Number one, if we are going to make heaven crowded, I have made up in my mind that I'm going. The first thing you have to establish if we are going to make heaven crowded today is I've made up my mind 
come hell or high water, I'm going to heaven. And so we have to make a determination in our spirit. You need to get a bulldog determination down in your spirit that is so strong that it doesn't matter what test or trial you go through. You've already made a declaration. I am making it to heaven. When the roll is called up yonder. I said when the roll is called up yonder. When the roll is called up yonder. I'll be there. We may have just one more river to cross, one more mountain to climb, one more battle that I've got to go through to leaving my troubles behind, one more battle with the devil, and everybody's going to understand that I'm going through with Jesus. Holding onto his hand as he leads me through the pearly gates here today. I've got an anticipation in my spirit and in my soul. I've made up my mind I am going to heaven if you're struggling in your commitment today if you've been getting weary in well doing you gotta go back to the landmark where you first made that consecration to God and say God I'm gonna reconsecrate my life I'm gonna reconsecrate everything so that I can make heaven my home it's not that I'm scared about going to hell although I don't want to go there it's about the anticipation that's within my spirit that I want to see you and make heaven my home and so if you're struggling in your commitment today let me give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven that's Matthew chapter 16 just in case you're wondering I'm not making this stuff up some of you need to go back home and bind some things and then some of you need to go back home and start loosening some things because the adversary's been messing with you and your family. And you need to walk back in and plead the blood over the doorpost of your homes. Plead the blood over the doorpost on your cars, wherever it is that you go. And say, God, we plead your blood over myself, over my family. Whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. It's the keys to the kingdom. That's what Jesus said. Matthew chapter 11 and verse number 12. The kingdom suffers violence. And the violent take it by force. The kingdom. It's a violent kingdom. But the violent take it by force. That means... You don't have a choice because I laid hold on it. And I might have to get violent with it. But it's mine. Every person that's in this room and every person that lives in the world today has the promise of heaven. The problem is they just haven't grabbed a hold of it and taken it for themselves. They get caught up in the pleasures of the world. They get caught up in everything that's happening. And they don't have that determination, Chris, that I'm making it to heaven. And I may have to get a little violent. And I may have to shake some things up in my life. And I may have to stir some things up in my spirit. Why? Because I'm going to get violent today. Because if there's one thing that matters beyond anything else, I got to go to heaven. Number one, I'm going to heaven. An old time preacher, Brother Alan Oggs, used to say it this way You gotta have the want to. You gotta have the want to. Number two, I'm bringing this to a close. I'm bringing as many people with me as I can. 
Heaven is not going to be crowded just because I made it. Well, Jesus, it's just me and you. We got 1,500 miles that way and that way and that way, and it's just me and you. No, the only way we can make heaven crowded wall to wall people is if we bring somebody with us. You say, well, you can't physically do that. You're correct, but we can go and make disciples of all nations. It's not just going to be white folk that are in heaven. It's not going to be just the black folks that are in heaven. It's going to be a multicultural experience. Red, yellow, black or white, they are precious in his sight. And so we got to go and make disciples of all nations. The only formula I can come up with is I'm going and make disciples. I'm going and make disciples. I'm going and make disciples. Heaven in all of its splendor will truly be a magnificent sight to behold. Everything will be new. Revelation 21, John penned the words and he said, I saw a new heaven. Everything will be new. I won't be up there sucking wind like I am today. Because we're going to have a new body. And that body is going to be able to worship 24-7, 365 around the throne. And not even break a sweat. Everything is going to be new. I'm working on that new body here. doing. Pastor Artie. Went through it here. Revelation 21 verse 4. And God shall wipe away every tear from their eye. There will be no more death, no more sorrow, no more crying. There shall be no more pain. Watch this now. Shall be no more pain. It's a command. There shall be no more pain. If you're suffering in pain today, when you get to heaven, there shall be no more pain. For the former things have passed away. Everything's new. It's a place of perfect peace, Brother James. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together, and the lion will eat the straw like the ox, and the dust will be the serpent's food, and they shall not hurt nor destroy in all of my holy mountain, saith the Lord. Heaven truly is going to be a fantastic place. But I saved the best for last. Because the best thing about heaven, elder, is that Jesus is going to be there. We're going to be united with the one who purchased us with his blood. We are going to come in contact with the one who made the ultimate sacrifice for us. Oh, what a Savior. Isn't he Wonderful. Jesus will be what makes it heaven for me. First Thessalonians 4, verses 16 through 18. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, the voice of the archangel and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ are going to rise first. Then we, which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Josh, comfort one another with these words. What's your response to a global pandemic? He's coming soon. What's your
your response to all of the confusion in the world today? He's coming soon. What's your response to wars and rumors of wars? He's coming soon. I can almost see him in the clouds. And so I'm come to comfort you today. Let not your heart be troubled. He's coming soon. Don't let fear and doubt grip your heart. He's coming soon. Comfort one another with these words. Stand with me. If you made decisions in your life that have compromised your eternity with Jesus Christ, today's the day to make things right. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. And one of those mansions has my name on it. Sister Lynn, one of those mansions has yours and Ron's name on it. Are now Ron's just getting to experience it a little bit early. But for every person that's here today, you can have a mansion in heaven. I feel the Holy Ghost right now with your name. They say that it's splendor, it's far beyond compare. Oh, in that place that's called heaven, my soul longs ha, to be. For if Jesus is there, it will be heaven. Oh, why don't you sing this great song with us right now? Oh, and heaven. Come on, these altars are open right now if you want to make a fresh commitment. Oh, yes, and Jesus. Come on, the invitation's going forth right now. Everybody get on board. Declare it today. Yeah. 
that are making commitments in their hearts, setting their face like a flint right now. I've got to make heaven my home. More than the pleasures of this world, I've got to make heaven my home. More than being successful on my job, I've got to make heaven my home. More than being the popular kid at school, I've got to make heaven my home. There's an anticipation. There's an urgency in my spirit today for young people and adults that are in this house that we've got to make a fresh consecration that heaven is going to be where I go. I go 
to prepare a place for you. Don't believe the lie of the adversary that says that God doesn't love you, that God doesn't care about you. Hell was created for Lucifer and the angels that went with him, and that was it. Heaven is for us. In closing today, we'll sing the old song. He's come. Me soon.